Well, the opportunity opened up. Our, our uh, Assemblywoman, Joan Millman, decided not to seek re-election, and so the opportunity came up. I've been working with her for years as a district leader, and I've been a community activist for the last 20 years, and so this seemed like a very um, a natural uh, progression and an opportunity that presented itself. Well, I actually had two primary opponents, if you might recall. But I think the way I won this election is because I was talking to people about issues I know. Uh, as I mentioned, I've been a community activist for years. I've been living in my neighborhood for over 30 years. I've been actively involved in almost every issue uh, you can think about locally uh, for so many years. And so, you know, I know where the community is on things. I know how to discuss these issues. And I have background in these issues. And I think people recognized that um, I had been there in the trenches working to improve uh, the lives of people in, in my community for years and uh, that they had faith that I would continue to do that in Albany. Well, actually, I started out as a, a community person. You know, I got involved with my block. Um, I got involved in my neighborhood association. I was president of the Borm Hill Association for six years throughout the 90s, which was in a time of great, uh, a great growth and, and great change. Uh, in that uh, regard, I led a number of efforts, including community planning and, and development that was community-based and what the community wanted. Um, also uh, was very active in traffic and transportation, environmental justice, and um, uh, it just, uh, it, uh, you know, early advocacy around cleaning up the Guanas Canal, for example. You know, I got involved in the, in the 90s in, in that effort. So, um, uh, politics for me is an outgrowth of serving my community. Well, there are probably a lot of things I'd like to see change in the next year. Obviously, the issues in my district, the 52nd Assembly District, which includes like Dumbo and Park Slope and Brooklyn Heights and Carroll Gardens and Gowanus, it's a very, very active area. There are a number of public policy issues. Um, uh, for years I've been working in, and it's still an issue, the intersection of environment, transportation, land use, um, and health, obviously. Uh, there's also education issues. and. Uh, uh, and siting. This is an area where there's a great deal of development pressure. And so, for example, uh, we've seen that with regard to our healthcare facilities. Uh, and uh, so the first bill that um, I will be uh, proposing is one that is about notification with regard to closures of hospitals. I've also been talking about a bill, and it's currently in the process of being drafted, where we would mandate that the uh, Department of Health collect the data and report back to the legislature information such as how long it takes people to get to emergency rooms, how uh, deaths due to pulmonary dis uh, disorders and asthma, for example, by neighborhood, so that we when we go to make decisions about what kind of health care facilities we need in our communities, we actually have community-based data that will allow us to make those decisions based on data and not political conjecture. And obviously one of the big issues in my uh, district was the Long Island College Hospital closing. And we, you know, we demanded for a long time a community needs assessment. And the reality is they're not collecting the data to give us that community needs assessment. That shouldn't happen again.